The Claiming of Grimoire Place by Vixgirl One Chapter Three, Part One With Curious Promise You sat that before, it just don't make sense, Harry said frustrated. It does, if you're a proper wizard. Malfoy returned scathingly. It's as simple as it sounds, Potter. I don't know how even you are having trouble grasping the concept. Harry wanted to get offended at that, but the fact was, he really couldn't understand what Malfoy was on about claiming a house. His primary instruction over the last few days felt like it should be easy. He had the keys, the wards were tuned to him, Creature obeyed him, though Harry was careful not to order him directly on much, if it wasn't important. Maybe I just need a better teacher. Maybe you should have thought of that before you begged me to move in, Malfoy said. He brought his hand up and pinched the bridge of his nose, rubbing it gently in what Harry had come to recognize as a gesture of extreme annoyance. I didn't beg you to move in, Harry objected. That's right. You begged anyone who reads the housing adverts in the Prophet. Malfoy took a deep breath and put both hands up. All right. What about this is troubling you so much? Harry slouched on the sofa, mind wandering. He considered saying, The fact that all I can think about is kissing you and you're driving me mental. But that wasn't the whole truth, and Malfoy was obviously determined not to talk about it anyhow. Every time Harry had tried the past few days, Malfoy shook his head and then did a, a thing to close the conversation. Harry couldn't seem to process it, even after days of Malfoy's new technique. He was no virgin, but damned if he didn't feel like one lately as flustered and confused as he got in Malfoy's presence. When Malfoy made a little noise of impatience, Harry shook his head. I'm thinking. I, I guess it's... When something belongs to you, you sort of belong to it too. And I live here and I've... I've checked all the boxes except for blood status. I own it and I'm good to creature and I read at the garden. I mean, it's my home. He fumbled out. Oh, I I'm trying to make it my home. It's certainly not Hogwarts. The Blasted House doesn't want me in it, and I've already done what I can to do what you're saying. Malfoy's lips turned down at the corners. He sank into an armchair opposite the sofa. He sighed and set down his wand on a small table next to him that Harry was almost sure hadn't been there moments prior. It's the same at Hogwarts. House magic on the grander scale. The castle itself is sentient. I know, Harry said, not following. Hogwarts had always been a safe place for him. Much, much safer and more comfortable than Grimmauld Place had ever been. Then maybe it has something to do with perspective, Malfoy said, clearly speaking to himself. He thought for a moment, turning strangely hesitant. You? He brought a loose fist up to his mouth to cough against. I heard somewhere that you weren't, that you didn't like that muggle house you were raised in. I didn't, no, Harry said after a beat. He wondered how much he should actually reveal, how important it was for Malfoy to know. He'd long ago gotten over the deep sting of living with the Dursdays, but that didn't make them pleasant to talk about. But after days of these lessons to discuss the house, Harry still hadn't learned a thing. He shrugged uneasily. They didn't like magic. It was fairly miserable. I was made to act as a servant, mostly. And an unwelcome one of that. It was the bare bones, but it seemed to confirm much more than that to Malfoy. Those tiny creases around the corner of his mouth grew more prominent, like he'd smelled a bad odour. The line of his jaw hardened. It occurred to Harry that Malfoy might know far more than what he'd been asking, and that he was angry on his behalf. I see. Well. 
Malfoy's voice was tight, and he cleared it with another one of those irritating little coughs. Then, so, your first exposure to house magic was Hogwarts, and then you came here. I've been to a lot of wizarding homes, Harry thought. The Weasleys? Right. But I'm assuming the reason you needed me instead of Wheezy was the generational magic. Malfoy cut in. Harry gave a reluctant nod, and Malfoy said, Hogwarts has been trained for centuries to respond to the needs of its occupants. It's the same for any house with generational magic, only this place has fallen into disuse. It doesn't feel like it belongs to anyone, and the way you speak about it. I think just this morning you've called it idiotic and blasted. Can't be endearing you to it. It wants to be claimed. That's evident on how it responds to me. Frankly, Putter, I don't know how not to comport myself the way one should within a magical home. I respect the magic within its walls, and it, in turn, attends to my needs. But the disparity between how you viewed Hogwarts and how you viewed this place has got to have something to do with it. So we need to change your perspective. Oh, I don't hate the house, Harry said quickly. Malfoy looked at him with uncharacteristic patience and Harry shrugged. Okay, it hasn't been the heaviest place for me. It was serious and I think of him a lot here. It wasn't very happy for him either growing up, and Ramus and I once had a fight here, and so many people who've stayed in it have died, and it has house elves' heads that I can't get down, and I was... He paused. You were? I was scared here. Harry admitted lowly. Ron and Hermione and I stayed here during the seventh year. For... A while. Okay. Malfoy sat slowly. He pinched the bridge of his nose again, then brought two fingers up to his forehead to massage there gently. So, your associations with this house might be preventing you from claiming it. I have claimed it. Harry said again, diverted. What does it need? Verbal cues? Sarcastically intoned. Oh, number twelve, Grumble Place. I hereby claim... You're not helping. Malfoy snapped. I stayed home for this. Harry slouched down a little farther. Fine. What do I do? Well, you could try speaking kindly to it. I don't notice you speaking to it. I've never shown it such blatant disrespect. Malfoy pointed out, fairly, the rat bastard. He sighed. In small ways, he urged, not now, simply when you notice you like something or that it does something to accommodate you. So, never then. Harry mumbled, spinning his wand. That, stop that. How can you expect it to think of itself as yours if you hate it? Harry blinked, looking at Malfoy for a long moment. The words, that's how I think of you, popped into his head, unbidden, and he felt his face heat up. Which was only true because he and Malfoy had known each other for so long, he reasoned, looking away with a hard swallow, because they'd been at odds for half their lives. But he certainly no longer hated Malfoy, not at all, even. He drew in a long breath. Okay, so I need to be nicer to it and just expect it to be nicer to me? Yes. I'll try that then. Harry said, feeling vaguely idiotic. Compliment it and bring it flowers and... He shrugged. Buy pretty furniture for it. No wonder you're a singer. Malfoy said under his breath. Harry smiled and Malfoy's mouth twitched up to the side in response. Although that's not the worst idea, really, because, wait, you said you redid the garden? Yeah, Harry said, feeling unaccountably sheepish. Back when Jin was living here, 
A plant got aggressive with her. I don't suppose you noticed the scar she has on her collarbone now, and I had to tame it a bit. Well done. Malfoy murmured, glancing out the French doors to where Frank lazed on the patio. Thanks. Harry frowned. But the garden is an extension of the house, Malfoy said. Not directly a part of, perhaps, but related. And yet you've never had a problem out there? No, Harry said thoughtfully. I've always liked it there. It's soothing. Nice in the summers. Once I knew I had to clear out the overgrowth, it was almost as if... His brow furrowed. Almost as if it knew how I wanted it to look and turn into that. It took remarkably little effort. Malfoy sat back, a look of such relief crossing his face that Harry realized Malfoy had been doubting Harry's ties to the house at all. He reached up, swiped a bit of corn silk fringe back and exhaled. Then you've just proved my point. He drawled after a moment, face turning arrogant as if he'd known exactly where I'd been leading this whole time. You liked it there. It meant something to you, so it responded to your wishes. I guess, Harry admitted uncertainly. He mulled over it for a moment, then gave a more definite nod. Yes. Hey, what's the door you mentioned before you moved in? Something that's supposed to reveal itself to me? You don't need to worry about that yet. Malfoy said, shaking his hand. You wouldn't understand. And the key won't come until the door does. I'm not worried, and I don't care if I understand. This isn't a request for information. It's a tell me or you're out on your ass," Harry said. Malfoy snorted. He shrugged and said, It's a rune that reveals itself to the master of the house to absorb some of their magic. Harry blinked. I... I don't understand. Malfoy cracked a laugh, quiet and low. I'm shocked. Shut it. Harry thought for a moment, a smile playing with his mouth as he looked at Malfoy, lounging across from him. He was wearing those ridiculous perfect-fitting jeans again and had topped them with a plain white t-shirt of all things. But for all his casual attire, no one would ever be able to mistake him for anything other than part of the upper-class elite. It was aristocratic. The way he sat, the way he moved. Daisy and refined and controlled all at once. And Harry wondered uncomfortably if that was how he always moved. He wondered if that was how Malfoy always looked. He wondered if in bad he might... Potter? He jerked his eyes up from where they'd been staring at Malfoy's stomach through the thin material of his t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, what? The house? Malfoy reminded him amused. He noticed the crinkles at the corner of his eyes again. Such a soft, charming feature on someone who could be so sharp and angular. Damn it, he could still feel the press of... I was uh, thinking... Harry bit out. So it absorbs the magic of the person who owns it? Not all, Malfoy said. Of course not. But there's a difference between catering to guests and attending to the needs of the owner. The house will need to know, and for that, it will need to absorb some of your magic into its walls. Or at least that's the way it was done before. When wizarding homes were carefully crafted rather than spelled together from hay and sticks, Harry ticked him an annoyed glance. He was fairly certain that it was in reference to the burrow, but didn't want to justify the comment by calling him on it. Malfoy grinned back, unrepentant. Then his smile faltered. I was you too. The room revealed itself to me at the manor when I was thirteen. The key would have appeared on my birthday last year had I been there. There was a lot Harry wanted to say. The melancholy in Malfoy's face was almost painful to look at. Harry wanted to offer his condolences, wanted to ask if there was no way Malfoy would ever be able to gain control of the manor again, 
wanted to comfort him somehow. But a strain on Malfoy's face faded to be replaced with a weary expression, as though he could read Harry's concern clearly. So Harry looked down at his knees and asked, Wouldn't it still be your father's or your mum's? They're both alive. Nodding, Malfoy propped his chin into his hand. The Malfoy entailments dictate that their heir take control of the manor at the age of twenty-one. My father would still have been considered its master until his death, but the wizard's magic comes into full fruition at that age. I thought seventeen, Harry said confused. That's simple legal adulthood for wizard powers. The growth of magic is not like height, Potter. It doesn't stop when you're a teenager. I... Harry processed that for a second. Well, I'm already twenty-one and I was living here when I had my last birthday. Did you have a tear? Not, I should point out, that I think it matters. No, the Weasleys. I've actually never had so many people over as I did last weekend, Harry said. And the house liked that. It likes being useful. So, I'll show a door and then a key and then absorbs my magic, Harry outlined. Malfoy nodded bored. Harry arched his eyes, skeptical. And then it will be mine? Assuming you get that far, Malfoy said. Well, what else can I do? Harry asked plaintively, scowling a touch when Malfoy sighed again, as though this wasn't the only fourth bloody time he'd done what he'd agreed to do up on moving in several weeks ago. Malfoy added a grimace for good measure and Harry wanted to snog that stupid grimace off his stupid, pointy face. There's also a level of authority that comes with running a wizarding home, Malfoy said, obviously barely refraining, rolling his eyes. And I'm fairly certain it might be embarrassed to look the way it does. Hey, I've tried to redecorate it. It doesn't let me, Harry said defensively. Malfoy snorted. We'll take it step by step, then. Go on, tell the house it's pretty. Piss off. Harry mumbled, trying not to smile. No, I mean it, Malfoy insisted. Perhaps not that, but find something nice to say about it. To me. Just some kind of declaration that it may understand. Harry rolled his eyes, feeling stupid. I appreciated the way the ceiling didn't cave in and murder my friends when they were here. He said. Potter, Malfoy said warningly. Fine, fine. Harry huffed for a moment. I was, I was scared here, yeah. But it kept us safe for a while, and occasionally a fire will light up without me asking for one. And creature isn't so bad. He added, warming to the subject. And my room never gets too hot or cold. It's where I like it. Though I can't say the same about the water when I shower. He said pointedly, biting his lip when Malfoy shook his head. Oh, I keep thinking it would look good with polished floors, if it let me do that, he finished lamely, then looked hopefully at Malfoy. Malfoy said, had cocked to one side as though waiting for an answer. Harry listened intently too, thinking that perhaps the house would respond the way it had last night, but there was nothing. Well... That's better than I hoped. Malfoy resigned. We'll work on it later, shall we? That's it? Harry said in disbelief. I spent weeks and weeks waiting for you to hold up your side of the bargain, and all I've gotten are a few minutes here and there over the last few days. You were, if I remember correctly, supposed to stay home today and work on this with me. I have. There's nothing else I can do at this point, Potter. It's something you'll have to practice, Malfoy said, lifting his shoulders in a helpless sort of way. Then his eyes hardened. And I am keeping my side of the bargain. You won't be able to. Harry frowned. I'm not going to kick you out, Merlin. You're a tetchy. That was a joke. I just want more time with you. He flushed. To uh, work on this. You need to make time to work on this. I'm assigning you homework, Malfoy said abruptly. Ha ha, Harry deadpanned. Yes, I'm very droll, Malfoy said. 
You're just trying to slither out of more work, Harry said, frowning. Potter, no one could accuse me of that any more. Malfoy stared out of the window at Frank for another moment and sighed. Anyway, as much as I enjoy getting things done on my own, I simply can't do this for you. So I want... Fourteen inches on house magic by Wednesday, Harry guessed. Malfoy gave in to what must have been an overwhelming temptation to finally roll his eyes. You need to engage with the house over the next couple of days. Try to keep it in the forefront of your mind. Beware of it as more than the place you sleep in and live. You need to experience living here. Also, do the magic in it. Just basic things, Harry said, bewildered. Cleaning spells, levitation, vanishing, conjuring. Well, now might be a good time to pretend to be Harry Potter from third year. What's that supposed to mean? Malfoy stood. He ran his hand down the cotton of his t-shirt as though to smooth it. Dad looked as unrumpled as if he'd just used an ironing charm. His hair fell, tousled and light over his forehead. It means it's time for you to show off your skills. Harry's hand clenched over his thigh. My skills? He said roughly. Malfoy's eyes flared, hot and bright, and Harry's stomach pitched as Malfoy came closer to the end of the conversation the way he had nearly every day since they'd woken up in bed together. He looked at Harry for a long moment, then leaned down, gazed still on him as though Harry were capable of moving away, and brushed his mouth light over Harry's own. Harry stilled, one hand straying to the front of Malfoy's shirt. He skimmed his knuckles down, feeling the warmth of Malfoy underneath feeling the way his stomach went tight. Malfoy stood again, lips ticking up to one side. Magic, Potter. Your magical skills. Malfoy looked at him mildly, but his voice was rough. His eyes wandered from Harry's face to his trainer's, and he suddenly chuckled. You can show me the rest another time. When? Harry blurted after a beat. But Malfoy was already gone up the stairs, if not for the echo of Malfoy's faint laughing lingering in the room, Harry would have thought he had not been heard. To be continued. Thank you for listening to this part of The Claiming of Grimmel Place by Big Girl One. If you would like to stay up to date on upcoming chapters and stories, you can follow me on YouTube, Spotify or AO3.